Welcome to Mirrorfly, a unified communications product for real-time chat, audio and video calls SDK. I shall be walking you through integrating calls in 20 minutes. In this video, we shall deep dive to see how to make and receive an audio and video call for the Android platform. This video will help you with the Easy Calls SDK integration steps. You may also use our sample application available in GitHub. If you need to explore more about the real-time chat and call features before you integrate it, then download our sample app. This would be the fastest way to build your application UI with Mirrorfly Chat SDK. You should also be aware of some of the basic requirements before you start working on the calls integrations. Before moving into the integration part, you need to know about the SDK license key to initiate calls. You can get a valid license key from the Mirrorfly user console or dashboard. You would need to be a registered user to access the console. Since I am already a registered user, I am logging into my user account to access the Mirrorfly user console. In the overview page, you can get access to the sample project source code, SDK files, and API credentials in the same overview page to test your integrations. You could copy your SDK license key and API base URL and add them into your project and initiate the call. Let's start with integrate the call SDK. In the first step, create a new project or use an existing project in the Android Studio. I am choosing a new project here in the demo. You can select the type of project you want to create from the categories of devices, then selecting the empty activity. Specify the name of your project to start with your integrations. Select the minimum API level you want your app to support. Your project is configured to use Android libraries by default, which replace the Android support libraries. It will take time to create your new project with some basic code and resources to get you started. Now I have successfully created the libraries. Moving on to step two, if you're using Gradle 6.7 or lower, add the following code to your root build.gradle file as showed in the documents. If using Gradle 6.8 or higher, add the following code to your settings.gradle file. Here I am using Gradle 6.8 version in my application. Paste the Gradle code in settings.gradle file. This settings file defines project level repository settings and informs Gradle which modules it should include when building your app. Now moving on to step three. So copy and add the dependency code in the app slash build.gradle file. This included all the required remote binary dependencies. These dependencies require that you declare the appropriate remote repositories where Gradle should look for the library. In app slash build.gradle file implement the Mirrorfly UI kit SDK. In this video, we use the latest released version. This would be updated in future and you might need to change it accordingly. Now moving on to step four. Here we would copy and add the gradle.properties file into the project to avoid imported library conflicts in the project. This Android plugin automatically migrates existing third-party libraries by rewriting their binaries. Now moving on to step five to add user permission. To add these user permissions, open the Android manifest.xml and add the below permissions to integrate your call SDK. You must declare all permission requests with an element in the manifest. If the permission is granted, the app is able to use the protected features. Let's start with initialize SDK for calls. There are few basic requirements before proceeding with the initialization process. Create a new base application file. Once created the application class successfully, override the onCreate method in base application. In your application class, inside the onCreate method use following method. When you are in the trial mode, by default the sandbox servers will be used. After subscribing to a plan, it will be upgraded to a dedicated server. 
You can copy the license key from the overview section in the console dashboard. Paste the license key in initialize SDK method. Now call the base application file in Android manifest.xml file. Let's see how to register a user. To perform registration, use the following method. Use is force register as an optional param for maintaining sessions. FCM token as a registration token that is generated by FCM SDK for the user's app instance to send message for free. Already created the layout for register button. The main activity file before that you can give the activity main binding. View binding works with your existing XML and will generate a binding object for each layout in a module. Try it at a registration function inside the button action to avoid error status or delayed responses. User ID must be unique ID, set as any alphanumeric and don't use any special characters. Create the toast once registration success, otherwise shows failure. Make sure that you have called the registration method only once in the application, because we have maintained the reconnection mechanism after app killed, so you don't need to call the register method again. Once registration was successful chat SDK automatically attempts connect to the chat server and chat SDK also observe the changes in application lifecycle, and accordingly it will try to connect and disconnect the chat server. Once the chat connection listener has been set, you will be able to receive the connection status changes in callback method. Once the registration is done, you can connect with the server. The registration with failure server will be automatically disconnected. Connection not authorized or unable to establish connection with server on connection failed method will be called. Automatic reconnection enabled in server using on reconnecting method. Call the chat connection function in once registration successful. Let's see initialize the call SDK. Create a new activity file in application. I created the call activity file. Once created the call activity application file successfully. The call activity file before that you can give the activity main binding. View binding works with your existing XML and will generate a binding object for each layout in a module. In call activity layout created a button for answer, decline and disconnect button in emulator. In your application class, set the call activity inside the onCreate method. Copy the code. Paste it in base application file inside the onCreate method. Also call the call activity file in set call activity class method which needs to be invoked during incoming call. When an incoming call is received call SDK will start this activity with the call details. Set call name helper is optional, if it is not configured then user name will be empty in the incoming and ongoing call notification. Send call message method is used to send initial calling payload to the count.
Let's see how to set up your call activity. Call UI activity should be defined like following code in manifest. Paste the call UI activity in manifest.xml file. Call the call activity file in manifest activity method to execute. You need to call the below method on your call activity on create method to configure the call activity. Paste the call activity file inside the onCreate function. Here activity represents instance of the call activity. You need to call the below method on onStart method from your call activity to notify the call SDK to remove the ongoing call notification. Create a onStart method in call activity application. You need to call the below method on onStop method from your call activity to notify the call SDK to show the ongoing call notification. Create on stop method in call activity application. Let's see how to make a call for sender and receiver. Call feature is essential for the modern day communication. Call SDK allows users to make a one to one audio slash video call with the another SDK user. You need to check the required runtime permissions before calling call SDK methods. For audio call, we need a below permissions to add in manifest file. If required permissions are not available is success will be false and error message will be given in callback. For Android 12, ensure that Bluetooth Connect and Read Phone State runtime permissions are granted for your app for seamless audio routing and GSM call handling. If the Bluetooth Connect permission is not granted, call audio will not be routed to Bluetooth headset even though it is connected. If the read phone state permission is not granted, GSM call related functionalities will not work in SDK. You can check the following method for audio call permissions. Paste the code in call activity file inside the onCreate method. For Android 13 call SDK, need below permission to show ongoing call for post notification. Paste the post notification code in manifest file. Also you can check the call notification permission is granted or not. Paste the call notification in call activity file. Let's see how to make a call. Make voice call feature allows users to make a one-to-one -one audio call with the another SDK user. Create a button layout for make a call and give the constraints to set the button. Call the button ID in main activity file. Give the text for button, so I write in the make a call you can set the text as your wish. You can make a voice call copy the code. Paste it in main activity file. Whenever user presses make a call button from your call UI, you need to call the following SDK method. To JID represents which user wants to make call. You can use get JID method to generate the JID for any user. You can pass the user ID as another user registered username. You can create a toast. Toast will shows once call initiated successfully otherwise it throws an error. You receive the audio call from the receiver, call SDK will show notification if device Android version is greater than or equal to Android 10 set as API level 29, 
otherwise set activity class for call SDK using call manager dot set call activity class. Once receive the call if you want to answer the call. You need to call the following method in call activity file to answer the call and notify the caller. Your activity may be started so whenever user presses accept button from your call UI. If the required permissions are not available then call B will be automatically declined even though you answered a call. You received a call if you want to decline the call. You need to call the following SDK method in call activity file to decline the call and notify the caller. You activity may be started so whenever user presses decline button from your call UI. You received a call if you want to disconnect the ongoing call. You need to call the following SDK method in call activity file to disconnect the call and notify the caller. If you want to just disconnect a connected call after the end of conversation, whenever user presses the disconnect button from your call UI. The following method accepts call action listener as an optional parameter. You can pass the listener to get disconnect success callback. Create on response method in disconnect function. Create a toast for disconnect method when success UI shows the disconnect message otherwise failure response. You can now run the application on an emulator or a plugged-in device. Let's see simple demo for making a call to receiver side. First, you need to register and log in the user. The toast shows the registration is done successfully, otherwise shows failure. I make a call to the receiver side and the toast shows call initiated. Wow, successfully received the call for receiver side. Once receiver declined the call, sender receives the toast user is busy. Now make a call for sender side. Successfully received the call for sender side also. Once the sender answer the call, connection will connected both the side. Once the sender disconnects the call, the connection will be disconnected. Great! Hope this video is helpful for you in your Mirrorfly call SDK integrations. Mirrorfly is the best platform to build in-app calls in your application. Check out our documentation page for more such tutorials that would ease your integration setup. We have a dedicated customer success team to assist you with your questions and help you pass through the blockers with ease. Thank you, and have a good day.